Hey, happy Thanksgiving, guys. I wanted to make a video so the next time I run into this, I won't have to uh, type it all out in an email. But I've got a potential customer, and he is wanting to know basically the difference between a blackbird, well, a superbird, and freebird. So there's a lot of differences. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I am definitely biased towards the free bird for obvious reasons. But since I've uh, built so many super birds over the years, I think I'm a pretty good guy to get info on about this. Let's, uh, let's start with a super bird. Now, a lot of you are going to ask me, and I get tired of answering this question also, man, that barrel's cool. I want one of those barrels so bad. These barrels are not available anymore. Originally, they were made by Jim C. And uh, then Charles Mack started making them. Uh, there haven't been any of these uh, available in probably a couple of years. So what we have for these is the uh, pretty much just the Russian barrels are the only game in town uh, at the moment. And I still don't have any new information on what's going on in Baikal about the Blackbird not being in production right now. Uh, but, you know, assuming the worst, it's out of production and it's not coming back. Okay. Now, uh, for one thing, the Blackbird was more or less just a, a second thought. Originally, the gun started out as a little pistol, a little Makarov, and it used the same valve and valve body. Uh, and probably to save production costs, they put those into the Blackbird, which makes it need to have a removable magazine, which creates some problems when you go to powering it with air. Now, uh, Magnus Ops and I solved that problem with his barrel suit. We went through like six prototypes of testing those little buggers, and it took forever. I thought he was never going to be satisfied, but we finally released those, and that does, that does seal up between the barrel and the valve body. It also created another problem, and that is that because it presses against the face of the valve body, it torques it out of alignment. So we had to come up with some creative solutions to get around that. And it, all of that done, occasionally you still will lose a valve seal, especially if you're like Bruce and likes to shoot 2200 PSI. Uh, moving on, the uh, magazine uh, it, it, because it's a polymer magazine, everything in here is polymer except for the uh, drive assembly and the air and uh, air parts and whatnot. But the feed channel inside here, actually inside here, is all polymer. And the polymer stretches, it can get broken in a certain spot. Um, and you must put a latch plate on here because that gives you a metal-on-metal uh, metal contact. If you didn't have that, it would just be a polymer-on-metal metal contact that would quickly wear. Putting your magazine out of alignment, out of vertical alignment with your breech and tearing up your breech. So you have that fix, you put a bigger motor in here, and uh, the magnetic auger, and the magnetic auger has a much beefier spring. You put a bunch of voltage behind that, and then you wind up with the polymer in here and the feed uh, channel not being able to handle it, and it can break, it can deform. So there are fixes for that. Uh, and you, to tune this thing, if you switch barrels, if you switch your voltage, if, if you switch 
uh, um, your valve, if you switch any of those things, uh, you, you're probably going to have to retune this booger in here to get it uh, working right. And to do that, you have to obviously turn the gun off, disconnect the magazine, take it out, dump all your BBs out somewhere, and dump them out of here, and uh, then take out one, two, three, four screws, take this off, pull your motor and gear assembly out, uh, tighten it or loosen it, one or the other, depends on if it's too tight or too loose. Put it back in together, put, put it back in, put everything back together, fill it up with babies, put it back in the gun, try it out. Um, and you generally have to do that process about five or six times, at least I do. Uh, so it's, it's a real pain in the ass to do that. And that's basically what you're going to have to do if you need to do any maintenance on the clutch, like um, not necessarily for putting lubrication in it because I have a mod where you can just squirt um, grease into it without having to disassemble it. Uh, one of the benefits of this magazine is that if you buy this adapter, it allows you to have a bottle in here. And there you can put your air bottle in here. But you can't really do that unless you have um, the latch plate um, with several other mods um, and there's my the expense my price I charge for doing them up like this and I don't advertise that you can email me here if you want to know what that is uh, all right and then we have you know our gun um, now, to tune this one up, it's just two screws. This comes off. Uh, you don't have to take your motor out. You can shoot it, turn the screw, shoot it, turn the screw, voila. Put your cover back on, you're good to go. Uh, the, the feed channel in here, it is steel and billet aluminum. It's not going to break. And uh, one of the other problems with the Blackbird is that that polymer can flex and I've seen several times BBs get jammed between the auger spring and the polymer and you know that's not good uh, then you have to take it apart about 15 more times and mess with it and try to figure out what's going on with it and adjust your clutch I mean it can be a maddening cycle with those blackbirds don't have that problem here at all uh, and because of the way we design the feed channel, it is much more forgiving in tuning it up as well. Uh, let's see. Availability. Um, the thing about the Blackbirds is that for the longest time, you could not find parts for them. If you needed parts for them, you would have to basically buy another gun. Uh, and then after the sanctions hit people started buying magazines from the Russians and then they had all these uh, they had to buy a complete gun if you wanted to get a hopper magazine so they had a complete um, gun left over minus the hopper magazine so they started chopping those up and putting them on eBay and then times were good because you could get all kinds of parts you wanted for them uh, but you know that lasted what year and a half maybe and like I say I don't know what's going on with Baikal right now uh, and I will keep you guys up to date on that uh, but <coughs> getting back to this there's no removable magazine here you just put your BBs in here and go to town now that means that we can get away from even having a breech seal. We don't need a breech seal in here because this is totally sealed up. That means that you're not going to have any air loss and because of the way it's designed 
it is always going to be in perfect alignment because the solenoid screws directly into the back of the valve body. Um, and I'm not trying to dog the Blackbird uh, for its design because it, it's definitely awesome for what it is stock. But, you know, we're talking about something that was designed to shoot a one, a three, and a six round burst at 450, 600, and 300 rounds a minute. Whereas we have something like this 5k build <coughs> where we have 12 fire rates starting at 470 rounds a minute all the way up to 5,000 rounds a minute with the option of a 1 to 10 round burst and a pulse setting that remembers what your favorite setting is for each given fire rate. So this is definitely in, it's in the same class as with the Superbird, but this was designed for what we did to the Superbird, and this is a refinement of that uh, based on all that I've learned over the years and dicking around with these things. I didn't even touch on the batteries. Larger batteries give you more capacity, more current. Uh, you know, this one takes five of the 18350s. This one takes six of the 14500s, the way it is. Uh, and these, these are 10 amp cells. When these are, these are 10 amp continuous cells. Uh, and they seem to be powering this gun just fine. I do have some hotter ones coming to try those out. Um, to see if I can get a little bit more power at high RPM out of them. But the ones that go in to the Superbird are 9 amp burst capable. That means they're not going to be able to sustain 9 amps. I think they're 4 amp sustainable compared to 10 amp sustainable. And you really run into, um, your current is very important with these systems because You've got a motor in, in there and a solenoid, and they're both fighting for that current. So um, the voltage is important to a certain point, and then, but if you don't have the current behind the voltage, you're, you're just pissing in the wind. Uh, yeah, they both take AR-15 butt stocks if you choose to get the stock upgrade for this one that we worked on uh, and with some some of these guns if you don't have a real fit this will pull right out I wouldn't trust a single point harness with this adapter unless there was a set screw that held it in right there uh, and you do need a castle nut for this if you don't want you stop turning around on you. Um, yeah, this this one comes with a plastic Picatinny rail that's not supported back here, so it tends to get kind of floppy. I do have a mod for that that I did not long ago, but our gun comes with a metal aluminum Picatinny rail that is very rigid. Uh, and we don't need a castle nut here because if you saw in my last video that's held in place with the negative battery terminal right there now the disadvantage is that you can't really do a direct connect to this as it is so far later on down the road we might make some revisions to where i've been thinking about having a, a an air tank out here somewhere but that's that's a long time down the road and with something like this uh, you pretty much want as much air as you can possibly get and I like to power these with 90 4500s because that's a big tank and you don't want to put a 90 4500 on here can you do it yes is it awkward as hell Absolutely. 
a good size to put under one of these and this configuration would be a 68 4500 or smaller it just depends on uh, how many rounds you want to get out of it and that depends on what pressure you're running uh, and your pulse setting your barrel length it depends on a lot of things but blasting four or five thousand rounds a minute uh, you're gonna want to have an external tank another thing about external tanks is <coughs> if you want to connect it to your magazine you will, what some people do is if they don't have their own compressor they'll probably do this their first time anyway is what they'll do is they'll fill their bottle up and think oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy and then they'll go to screw it on here and it won't go because as soon as this pin in here cracks that valve open this fills up with whatever pressure the regulator is putting out and it locks your bottle in there with a partially open valve so you're not getting good flow and then your bottle is basically locked on there with a partially open valve there are ways to get around that uh, and they're pretty dangerous so i'm not really going to get into that but if you want to do it the right way what you want to do is take your magazine off and screw it onto an empty bottle and then fill your bottle up with the magazine on it it's always a good idea if you're going to do it that way to go ahead and empty your bottle that day or the next day when you plan to use it because having a, a, a tank directly connected to your magazine like that it's really hard on your front seal mainly uh, it's hard on your other seals but your front seal that the valve uh, slides in and out of what it'll do is over over time it'll it'll squish that thing flat i have seen them squish so flat from people leaving them connected for months on end there was one that uh, somebody had me service and I looked in there and I said I don't even see a seal in here oh well I'll just put another one in it so I put another one in it and I couldn't get the thing to run right to save to save my life so after a while I said maybe maybe that seal is just still in there and I just couldn't get it out so I took it apart and lo and behold there was a seal in there and that joker was about that flat so I got it out put the regular seal in and it was good to go that's not a huge issue if you keep seals on hand the size of the seal is a 007 it's made out of polyurethane so there you go I keep them in stock I keep uh, three different types in stock actually for different uh, purposes oh let's see have I rambled on long enough? What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, those, those are the main differences. Uh, like I say, you know, this one, this one should be around for a long time. And quite frankly, you're not supporting communism if you buy this one. <laughs> this is partially manufactured in the USA. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and the people who make the other parts are friends of mine so you're you're supporting people that you know and a lot of you guys already know who they are uh Ruslan and sergey i this would not exist without those guys so i thank you guys very much i know you don't watch my videos so i mean i could just sit here and talk a whole bunch of smack about you but i love you guys you guys are awesome and thank you so much for making this happen all right guys well uh that's about it i'm sure i left something out uh look in the comments if it's not you know in the next couple of days if i find something i'll put it in the description down below uh again if you want to contact me uh there's the email address again and uh happy thanksgiving and i'll see y'all later